All right, guys, here's our next chapter. It's pronoun case. But before we even get there, get yourself a T-chart ready here, okay? Simple T-chart. You're going to have two columns here and here and a list of things under each column. In case you don't know what a T-chart is, I pulled up the graphic there to show you. We'll be using that very shortly. Our concept, this chapter, is pronoun case. And what pronoun case is is the ability to know how to use he versus him or she versus her or us versus we or I versus me, those, those kind of decisions. And this is one of those things that your ear is pretty well trained to deal with, but there are some rules out there that we abuse in spoken usage. So I want to make sure you rely on the rules more than your ear. You're also going to solve the eternal question of who or whom, because who or whom is a pronoun case issue. And by the time we're done, you will know how to use who or whom correctly all the time. All right, first thing. We have three case types in English. Uh, languages like Latin have, I don't know, six or seven. So we only have three. That's kind of cool, the nominative and the objective and the possessive. For the most part, we're going to just be worrying about nominative and objective. We'll do a little teeny bit with possessive, but really it's just one little rule. The predominance of our stuff is going to be nominative and objective. All right, so on your T-chart, on the left-hand side, uh, the left-hand column, the title for the left-hand column should be nominative, okay? Now, the nominative case pronouns are either subjects or predicate nominatives. So if you have a subject and a predicate nominative in a sentence and it uses a pronoun, that's got to be in the nominative case. That's why we say he threw the ball, not him threw the ball, because he's a nominative case pronoun. Now, write these pronouns in your column. You have a nominative as a title. Write these down as, as your nominative case pronouns. I, he, she, we, they, who, and whoever. You will need to know this. You will need to have these columns memorized, and you'll need to know, you know what is nominative and what was, will be the next case, which is objective. To do well at the quiz, you'll have to know these flat. That is memorization you will have to have. Now, you don't have to worry about you or it, because you or it stay consistent no matter what you're doing. It's only the other personal pronouns that change, and in the case of who or whoever, uh, indefinite or relative pronoun. I don't care. Label doesn't matter, really. All right, so you get all that down. Now we'll move on to some examples. Both he and I noticed the mistake. It's he and I because they're the subject of noticed. My parents and she, which is the subject of arrive, they is the subject of would drive, so that's why we're making those choices rather than him and me, her, and them. It's because of what they do. It's all about what they do, their function. All right, the objective case. Now make your right-hand column, title it objective, and the objective case pronouns are objects. They're either a direct object or indirect object, which is what we call the object of the verb, but they can be either direct or indirect or their objects of a preposition. So just in the word objective alone, we know what they're going to be. They're going to be one of three types of objects. And the objective case pronouns are me, him, her, us, them, whom, and whomever. So you've got to go back to that second, that second chapter knowledge. Remember how to find a direct object. Remember how to find an indirect object. Remember when to use a predicate nominative. Know your prepositional phrases for object of the preposition, and hopefully a subject is easy enough to find now that you don't have to revisit that. Now, this is our first special rule. It's called the appositive rule, okay? What is an appositive? We've already covered this, but I'll hit it again. Jot it down if you need to. An appositive is a noun or pronoun that renames or restates another noun or pronoun, and it can appear anywhere in the sentence. If you should have an appositive that is paired with a pronoun, the case of the appositive, okay, here's the noun, here's the appositive, is going to be the same as the noun it's in apposition to. Well, what does that mean? What it means is figure out what the noun is and then make sure the case of the pronoun matches it. 
Seniors is what in this sentence? Seniors, let's just block out the we. Seniors will be graduating shortly. Well, in this case, seniors is a subject. So when we look, do we choose between we seniors or us seniors? Well, we is nominative case. Nominative cases are subjects. So since it has to match seniors, since seniors is a subject, we choose we. Conversely, down here, there are two more years of school left for us sophomores. Well, why us? Well, when we look at, let's rule out us and let's find out what sophomores is. Is it direct object, indirect object, or object of the preposition? I'll let you look at it for a second. Pause me if you want to really give it a good look. Okay, the reason you choose us is because sophomores is the object of the preposition. So since sophomores is the object of the preposition, the pronoun that it's, that's renaming it, that's, it is an apposition to, has to match what it's doing. It's an object of the preposition, so us has to be in the objective case. That's why it's not for we sophomores. If you have a question about this, bring it up on our first grammar check-in date. Um, I can go back to possessive case in a minute. Well, not a minute, but later. Okay, let's just look at a couple of examples, a couple of real basic things, and then we'll do some sentences. I took her shopping at the mall. Why is it her? I'm asking for the function. What, how is her functioning? It's functioning as a direct object. David and I asked him to play foosball. How is him functioning? What function? It is also a direct object. Mr. Ayers gave the test to her. How is her functioning? It is an object of the preposition. All right. I will stop here. Okay, so that takes care of this part of the lecture. The next um, video will be on two basic exercises just to get you familiar with the nominative and objective case pronouns and their functions. So go ahead and view that one right after this one. And I'll eventually shut this off.